Hi, welcome to this uh, video. We're going to discuss now exercises 1 to 4 of 6 debates over macroeconomic policy. This is chapter 36, and remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So, the first question says, the chapter suggests that the economy, like the human body, has natural restorative powers. A. Illustrate the short run effect of a fall in aggregate demand using an aggregate demand aggregate supply diagram. What happens to total output, income, and employment? Well, so we need to uh, depict this with the price level y axis, and then in the x axis, we need to put the output. This is how we represent the aggregate uh, diagram. So then we, we have from one side the aggregate demand which is like a downward slope and then we have this upward slope which is the aggregate supply and then here is the equilibrium uh, we are going to put the equilibrium P1 and Y1 okay so then here is the situation where we have a fully the aggregate demand so we started from the P2 and Y2 this is like the, the, the initial point uh, and then we are going to have a decrease, so it's going to be a shift to the left for the aggregate demand. So then uh, we now we will have in the level of output, naturally will be lower. And remember, uh, when we talk about output, we are talking um, in the same time at, at the level of income because the GDP is uh, the level of input, input of income as well so then we have this decrease and then unemplo unemployment uh, employment naturally will be lower due to the, the lower level of the aggregate supply so then firms they will hire less people B if the government does not use stabilization policy what happens to the economy over time Illustrate this adjustment on your diagram. Does it generally occur in the matter of months or matter of years? Well, before uh, Keynes' ideas who proposed the intervention of government, we had the this is going to be like natural restorative power. So it means that with the time, the this this uh, level of the vertical line is the representation of the aggregate supply in the long run which is vertical it means that it does not depend on level of prices so basically with without any stabilization program basically the idea is like the aggregate de demand will recover by itself the problem is that it will take times even years to recover the original position obviously no one knows what, how much time it uh, takes in order to recover. So for this reason, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not always um, like advisable that we have this uh, no intervention policy. So actually most of the economists and most of the policy uh, makers, they prefer intervention of government. Actually, we can see that example with this COVID-19, where uh, most of the country, countries, they have tried to um, put or push the aggregate demand to the initial values. So then this should be the situation. Then, do you think the natural restorative powers of the economy mean that policy makers should be passive in response of the business cycle? Well. Actually, this is like really subtle question because it depends. Because if, if like, people trust on policymakers, trust on governments, they will follow as uh, policymakers want. However, when there is not trust between these two parts, naturally any 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 change or or any policy trying to recover the aggregate demand will not be um like people they don't really trust what is going on so definitely they don't go in the way as the government or policy makers want so then should be these the the situations but if the if the people actually believe what government uh do definitely this should be great because in that situation uh, the government c could not be passive until uh, in facing these kind of changes. Second, policymakers want to stabilize the economy must decide how much to change the money supply. 
government spending or taxes why is it so difficult or is difficult for policymakers to choose the appropriate strength of their actions well when we talk about money supply we know that it affects actually the reserves of the banks so actually the banks act as um, policy uh, or a mon affect the money supply directly and it's not intervention from the government because all the money that goes from the bank central bank throughout the the banks they can use in the way they want so actually by law there is uh, a ratio naturally to be controlled but maybe the banks could use less than this ratio so for this situation maybe the the uh, the multiplier for money could not be as high as the government want so definitely this should be uh, uh, difficult to measure the strength of this uh, policy and then the change in the aggregate demand should be difficult to calculate when we talk about government spending we we know that there is a propensity a propensity a marginal consumption of more marginal to consume and then we know or we have an estimation of a number however it can change over time it can be even dynamic so then until until that situation if you are thinking that the PMC is 0 0.5 but at the end of the day when uh, when you put this money in the economy the change is 0 0.8 so then your impact on the aggregate demand should be lower because of the propensity uh, sure sorry should be higher because the propensity to marginal to consume is higher than the estimated so then for this situation it's kind of difficult to measure the strength of this policy or you can think about the crowding out effect that remember that it it uh, comes from the interest rate is higher so then the investment is not um uh, is not encouraged or um to has not encouraged meant to to increase because it has a negative impact with the interest rate so then maybe sometimes it's kind of difficult to calculate precisely the exit uh, point or the excess number of this one when we talk about tax change well we can uh, we can discuss here about the the trust of if people really believe that this if this change is permanent or temporary when this is temporary people would not react to this change However, when people think that uh, that this is going to be permanent, the decisions over uh, over a, a time, over a frame of time, definitely will be uh, will be will be different with this situation. Third, the problem of time inconsistency applies to fiscal policy as well as to monetary policy. Suppose the government announced a reduction in taxes on income from capital investments, like new factories. If investors believed that uh, capital taxes would remain low, low, how would the government's action affect the level of investment? Well, when these taxes are low, while well, people um, believe that this is going to remain low, naturally it will change the investment because uh, investors will have incentives to uh, make investment due to the interest rate will will be uh, well not the interest rate but the tax. Uh, the, the tax reduction will be over uh, important period of time so definitely should be an incentive for investors B after investors have responded to the announced tax reduction does the government have an incentive to renew uh, on its policy explain well from one side we can say that they can cut incentive but however it can produce a new decrease on investment so definitely this is not good, uh, a good policy and furthermore if they try to pursue this kind of policy in the future uh, investors won't believe anymore on government so definitely this should not be a good, a good way to do it given you answer to part B would investors believe the government's announcement what can the government do to the increase the credibility of announced policy changes well naturally if the government changes the policy uh, changes then the, the taxes the levels that they were back uh, definitely this sh should affect the credibility for a government so definitely this uh, this should be a bad way well the only way to uh, 
to capture in some way the, the trust for investor should be to be really clear about what it's going to be performed informing dates informing uh, all information when maybe this policy will change if it's going to be temporary if it's going to be like in the long term definitely should be better for uh, the investors and for the policy as well D. Explain why this situation is similar to the time and consistency pro problem faced by monetary policymakers. Well, the, the main issue when we have this uh, temporary or, or time inconsistency is, inconsistency is that obviously due to the bureaucracy, it takes time to put a law working into the economy. So definitely this should be kind of similar in the, in the part that maybe you can you can move the economy with no adjustments that are not necessary anymore because the the the, the how to say is just like the the curves they move but in the in the really short period but they uh, they are back to the original levels and then you move them with this uh, with this situation of tax definitely this is not going to be okay it's similar to fiscal policy there is a bureaucracy it takes time to put a lot of work in and take effect into the economy so definitely should be like um, like similarity these situations so at the end you provide a wrong stabilization for Chapter 2 explains the difference between positive analysis and normative analysis. In the debate about whether the central bank should aim for zero inflation, which areas of disagreement will involve positive statements and which involve normative, normative adjustments? So here I split in these two. So here when we talk about positive, we are saying that the inflation is 4%. The change in inflation from the third quarter compared with the third quarter of the previous year um, has increased 2%. This is positive. It's something that it is a fact. Something normative is like the debate that is in these specific questions and macroeconomics. If the zero bound inflation is better. Well, this is a point of view where actually this is not really 100% uh, true because it depends so definitely this should be a normative adjust, um, argument positive cost of reducing 1% is 5 times in terms of output so the, this effect this is supported by data so definitely this should be with some positive situation other positive could be like the inflation is zero not, pos not possible to have negative interest rate well, not possible because at, uh, at, at that point, imagine that your inflation is zero and you have like any interest rate, uh, then it's not possible to make any any interest rate by policy makers. Then normative, economy should focus into productivity. Well, this is part of the debate, so definitely uh, it's not something related with positive, it's not a fact, it's something subtle, something based on opinion. Well. I hope it has worth. I hope it, uh, you understood better the questions. As always, I say this is my point of view. Maybe I have some mistakes. I'm more than happy to hear your comments. I'm more than happy to hear the maybe some ways to add in this information. Uh, and that's it. Thank you so much. Take care and definitely see you next time. Bye bye.